Alrighty, hello everyone, Alan from MysteryMTG.com. Welcome to Elves and Espresso. We're not done, but we're very, very close to done. As you can see, there's no POS, and that's, uh, you know, we just got the Wi-Fi in, but I need more outlets. So there's a couple of things that I have to do, but more or less, we're, we're basically close to finish. And I want to have a conversation. I want to have a, a very frank and full-depth conversation. If you're watching this video and you don't own a game store, if you don't have any plan to open a game store, I still think it's very interesting. And if you're watching this video and you're not a magic player, you're not a game store owner, but you want to open a cafe or a restaurant in South Korea or anywhere in Asia, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, really good information in this video. But let's take a look around, a little walk. This is what you see as soon as you walk in, right? Uh, definitely, definitely more medieval tavern-esque. And I didn't even know I was going for that 100%. But yeah, very, very medieval. We've got this big, big old table for like Warhammer or big board games. And then we have some smaller tables and another big table for D&D over there. And then we have another table for two people over there and then another four person table over there. So, and there's also a little bar seating over there. But yeah, this is the kitchen. Uh, before we get into a long talk about whether or not this was worth it or if I would have done it. Uh, here's the espresso machine, kegerator for beer, that's the entire kegerator, it's massive, grinder, panini press, freezer and fridge, ice maker, and then behind me isn't really done, but yeah, this little dishwashing area that we'll finish later on, but I, I just want to have a, oh, terrace, yeah, so I'm not, it's hot outside, so I'm not going to go outside, but yeah, it's pretty, it's, it looks nice at night. So... Let's have a conversation. Let's, let's have a talk. You know, um, you know. Let's do it this way. All right. So here we are. We're we're towards the end of the finish line, and um, I've had a lot of people who are just like, "Dude, it's been three months. You gotta open. You gotta open." I mean, there was really good things to not having opened quickly. Um, we saved a bunch of money in some ways, and then obviously lost money in different ways because we're not open yet. But, you know, first I'd like to talk about the original intention and then where we're at now with whether or not that was, you know, properly thought about or if we're even close to getting towards the conclusion of that or the goal. So the original intention was to have an Asian game store uh, in Korea because I've lived here for 10 years and I thought there was a pretty decent market and there's a lot of really good opportunities in terms of you know, uh, boxes being cheaper, boxes that you can't get in America that you can get here. Same thing with Japan. There's sometimes things that are exclusive to WPNs in Korea or to game store owners or comic book game store owners in Korea or Japan or in America. And so if you have multiple locations, you do get that really good benefit of, you know, multi-region uh, access. So if one of our customers in Texas is like, hey, there was this random Japanese manga thing you can only get in Japan, can I buy that from you? And we're like, yeah, we, we have that in stock. I'll just ship it from America to Korea. As long as it doesn't violate the distributor agreement, um, then you're fine, you can do that. But here we are, we're towards the end and I, I've seen the distribution contracts. Yeah, that, that's been the case. So I'm not gonna say that was bad. Um, you're paying a lot higher of a price in Asia because there's that unless you're in Japan because there's the currency uh, is very weak there right now and so you do get a benefit there. In Korea, not as much, you're just paying a higher price, but you're, you have access to product, for example, Lord of the Rings Special Edition Collectors, uh, Lost Caverns of Ixalan Collectors that are super sought after and still available here but not available in the US. So that's pretty interesting, right? That's a pretty good part of it. Um, now I'll say this. It cost me, and this is the part where if you're not a game store owner, if you're not a magic player and you're just watching this and you're just curious, this is a good point to listen into. It cost me about $4,000 to build this entire interior. All the chairs, all the blah, 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 everything except for the machines, about $4,000, which is very, very cheap. I was originally quoted $50,000 for an entire interior. So we're uh, definitely good there. Now, if you count the espresso machine, which is the most expensive thing in this uh, whole shop, and the grinder, which I got an insanely good deal on uh, these items, but I think everything included, I mean, the express machine alone is about $10,000 in the US. I paid $7,000 here, and I got the grinder, which is $5,000 for free. I got the hot, wa uh, hot water dispenser, the ice maker, all of that was for free. Got a really, really good deal there. And so, you know, take all that into account. So it's probably cost me like 17 grand. I'd say 17 grand to make this entire store, get it ready. POS will come in, Wi-Fi is installed, um, and then we're basically almost there. And then I guess the stove I have to install today, but yeah, we're about 17 grand and that's to cross the finish line. Now, 
fifty thousand dollars was the interior quote from like a professional company and I just told you I saved a bunch of money so you're thinking well he's probably gonna say this is what you should do DIY no no don't you don't how you know, listen to me young boys this was a terrible idea it's an absolutely terrible idea and if I could go back and save my time three months of my time I would have just paid whatever anyone was asking as long as I got it done the right way um, DIY is so much and you can do things wrong and then you got to fix them and then like the ice maker just broke so I got to go call the company and get that installed and if you bought it new you, it'd be hundred percent fine and you wouldn't have to waste your time so many things that if you just get them new, you don't have to worry and there's no hassle. And then, you know, as I get older, because I grew up poor, so I always bought used, and I was like, you know, fixing it or whatever is just part of it, that's part of the process. But as you get older, you start to realize that just spending more money and getting it done brand new or getting it done for you and saving that time. If you don't value your time, that doesn't matter. But if you value your time, if you have kids and you want to spend time with your kids instead of being at the shop and doing this and doing that, I touched a live wire here and I almost died. I mean, it was not, I almost fell off the ladder. I mean, there's so many different things that <coughs> that almost happened that made this oh, absolutely not worth it, right? Now, the market is there. There's going to be customers. I don't want it to be that popular. I just want it to be a little hangout. And after a couple of years of doing it, if it's successful, we keep doing it. If it's not successful, we'll pull it. Same thing with the U.S. location. This isn't supposed to be like I'm going to retire off of any of this. I, it's just a passion project that I've taken way too far. But if you're gonna be starting a restaurant in Korea or restaurant in America, or restaurant in Texas, get a company and just pay them to do it, okay? Uh, more or less, that's my advice to you. Don't waste your time. You're gonna do, focus your time on the menu, the items, the quality, and don't worry about the interior. If you can afford it, just do that. Now, if you're gonna do the DIY, you know, just talking to someone who's been doing it for three months, where I, I saw the woman next door who paid a company to do it and finished it in like two weeks. I'm sure she paid big money, but um, two weeks versus three months. So value that time there and you might have the answers. 50 grand more worth it to you if you get the additional two months of business or, it, you know, so it really depends on you. It's a case by case thing. Now, um, just looking at it, you know, I, I said earlier that the intention was to just build a game store and have fun with people. Uh, but also have the ability to have the exclusive distribution contracts and everything, that's fine, right? Uh, some people have asked me if um, the Texas location was easier, with Korea, Texas obviously, um, way, way, way easier. And that's just because I'm American and I can speak English well. Here I've had to do most of the communication in Korean and it has been awful, awful. I mean, I thought my Korean was good. No, it's bad, it's bad. When it comes to talking about Wi-Fi installation and espresso machines, yeah, I can't speak Korean. I, you know, I thought I was okay at it. Nope, nope. Uh, now, having looked at that stuff, I'm like, I, my Korean is awful. So, um, would I have done it looking back at all of this? No, probably not. I wouldn't have made the store. It's just too much, way too much, a big waste of time. Uh, even if it's successful, even if it's, you know, I think I still would have preferred to have my time and to focus on the American business where I have most of my friends and my connections and my relationships are in America. And now I'm just building an entirely new thing, which is like a journey that you didn't need to go on to. It's like walking to Paris to get to India. I mean, like, it's just, dude, take a plane to India. What are you doing? But you've added this. Now, it might be cool when you get to Paris and you have a story to tell, but you didn't have to do that. You could have just gone to Paris but, um, or gone to India, whatever. Hey, you can tell I'm very frazzled. I'm very, very tired. But, uh, and, and look at the apron. That's nice, right? But yeah, um, here we are, we're towards the end. I've told you how much it cost. I touched a live wire, almost died, almost fell down from a ladder. Uh, a lot of things happened that weren't great. A lot of uh, business stuff, like trying to get stuff used, you can almost, you can very well get scammed if you do it the wrong way and you aren't uh, familiar with something. So if you're opening a business in Asia and you're not Korean or you're not Asian, you know, I use Korea as an example because I live here, but if you live in Vietnam or Thailand or something like that, Really consider, you know, if your wife is going to help you, if your girlfriend's going to help you, if your brother's going to help you, or whoever who's been here who knows the culture and knows the language and everything. Now, if you don't have that, don't do it. You're not going to, it's not going to work. It's, I hate to say it, it's not going to work. You're going to get scammed. You're going to lose a bunch of money. And uh, it's just, there's so many things that you need to know the language and the culture for 
And even if you knew the language, if you're not, if you weren't born and raised here, you still wouldn't know some things that are really, really important. Now, I know a lot of it now because I've been told by so many different people all these things. So I finally understand regulations on this, regulations on that, etc. But um, yeah, if you're starting your game store in Texas and you want to do kind of the same thing as me, Lord of the Rings vibe, whatever, chandelier, uh, wooden tables, blah blah blah. This in Korea might work because people are careful, but in Texas it would not work. These tables would break, people would, you know, uh, I've had people in America who would rub their foot on our wall, who would, you know, scratch our tables, etc., etc. And here it doesn't really happen. I don't know if it's just people are a little bit more careful about that and they're, you know, they worry about getting in trouble with the owner. I don't know. But in Texas, we had people do that. We had people walk in with super muddy shoes. Doesn't really happen here. That's like a big, big, big no no. And people just wouldn't do that. But uh, in Texas, th that does happen. So if you wanted to create this vibe in Texas and make it a game store, you'd really have to consider, you know, how durable it's going to be. And it's not very durable. I mean, you know, even this, like, you put enough weight on this and it's probably going to break. Um, you know, this table's fine, but you look at some of this stuff and if you just aren't careful, your furniture is not going to last very long at all. It might even just last, I don't know, like two or three months, actually. And I don't even know how long this is going to last me. But in America, we have very durable tables and durable chairs, and they've lasted for almost two years now. But they're like hard plastic and metal and stuff, so there's a big difference there. Now, the espresso machine, which um, it's the Lemuro Joka uh, Classic 2 Group, and then we have the Malkong E80S, and these are both high, high-end machines. And you're saying, Alan, why did you spend so much money on an espresso machine? That just doesn't, well, it's this. We want to do stuff like including drinks into event entries, etc., etc. you know, beer, half off of beer if you buy a board game, whatever, right? And if you want to do that, you have to be able to do volume. If it's a small machine, if it's a one group, then it's going to take forever for you to get drinks out. And people are going to be super angry. They don't want to sit there waiting for 15 minutes. But if, you know, with this, I mean, it's just high volume. You, you got your steam wand and this. Uh, yeah, you're not going to understand if you don't know how to make espresso. But it's just industrial. And it's a tank. And you're able to make a ton of drinks with this and not have to worry about overheating or, you know, stuff like that. And so this is very important. And the cool thing about the kegerator for the beer, uh, even though we're only using two taps, is it's basically a massive fridge. So we have this fridge and we have that fridge. So we have a lot of fridge space to use. And then you can see that I'm doing some DIY stuff until we get some plastic covering over here. But yeah, so, <coughs> you know, this wasn't easy. Taking this upstairs, this is all used, was incredibly, yeah, this had to come up a uh, stairway. So that was not easy at all. And you look at the interior, it's pretty nice, right? I mean, I think this is the kind of thing where you'd come and, and you wanna just play games here, play D&D, it's very on theme. And um, yeah, I mean, here we are. So it's been very, very difficult to do this and the American business and our gold subscription, which is a very high volume and uh, requires constant communication with bigger customers. So I'm getting really burned out. And I haven't been able to play Magic much. I played it recently and I felt most of my decks were old and stale and I didn't really have that much fun with my deck. I kind of wanted to build something new, but I don't have time to build something new. And so you just, once again, value your time. You know, are you in this for the long, you want to die running this game store? And if you're opening multiple locations, you're going to die running that game store. You're going to open another one and another one and another one and it's supposed to scale, right? Um, but if you're going to die running your game store and you're okay with that and you're okay with being at the mercy of distributors. And, and this is true, if you're gonna open a panini shop, if you're gonna open a bakery, or if you're gonna open anything, you have to look at your costs and if they're, you know, if they're static, if they're gonna stay that way, or if they're dependent on a market, or if they're dependent on a person or a company. And if it's dependent on a company or a person, you have some real issues. WOTC determines how much money we make. Uh, not only does WOTC determine it, they determine it, and they give it to PhD and say, you can determine what your cut is, and PhD will do that. Now, obviously, if they overextend, we stop buying, but typically we still need to stock our stores. So this actually happened a while ago where one of the distributors, I won't say names, but one of them um, increased their price and then we were like, we're done ordering from you. Yeah, we need this product, but this is predatory. Not, not only did we do that, but most stores did that and then they reduced their prices. But if they hadn't reduced their prices, we would have just been locked out of a lot of allocation of Magic product or Pokemon product or Yu-Gi-Oh product. And it's, um, 
It's really bad, man. It's really bad. So if you're running a business and you're dependent on someone else for something, your store can be successful, but you still might close because your operating costs, your overhead is just way too high. So with this game store, my current cost on it is very low. I mean, compared to what most people would spend on doing something like this. I mean, this is, for some people, this is a $100,000 build out. And for you, that might be, if you have the money and you might want to make this amazing, because like these, these could be replaced with that, you know, like these beautiful solid, yeah, there we go, beautiful solid wooden shelves, but it's just too expensive. It's too expensive and it's very hard to get upstairs, etc. And so I was like, okay, well, we can't do that for now. Maybe in the future, but not for now. Um, but if you had just gone into it wanting to do perfect, then yeah, you would have installed some beautiful wooden shelves and it would look amazing but we can't do that you know we have to abide by a budget and the u.s business staffing has been an issue here staffing is an issue and the game stores i think are some of the most misunderstood businesses out there uh it's very funny i see people online now for all lorcana and for star wars unlimited the same people that complain about market prices so if the store is charging market or sorry if the store is charging msrp and market is lower they get super angry we've had people write one star reviews because they're like well did this person charged me way more than tcg player as if we signed a contract saying all of our pricing has to be based off tcg player even if it's under our cost you're going to get angry that something it's like you go to a restaurant and you buy a dr pepper for 250 and then you go to costco and you find it for 60 cents 70 cents are you going to call the restaurant a scammer no, they have to make margin on what they're selling to keep the lights on. Some people just do not understand that when it comes to game stores. They understand it for restaurants. They'll tell you, the same freaking people will tell you, they have to make money, you know? I mean, these guys are operating on blah, blah, blah. They're selling sandwiches. And at game stores, you're letting people sit here for hours for free. And then when you try to charge anything, they're gonna, you know, and they go to Starbucks and spend 15 bucks, but they come to the game store, they don't wanna spend five bucks. It's a very difficult market, very difficult market, and it's dying. Some of, one of our biggest competitors closed the other day, and I don't blame them, but I was like, wow, they, I thought they were making money. I thought they were doing incredibly well. And boom, whew, gone. Just like that. I really, really urge a lot of you to never put yourself in this position. Game, you know, selling games, selling board games, selling card games, the one thing I'll say is amazing about it is the morality of it is amazing just making people smile and making people laugh and you know you just you're contributing to a positive in their life you know you're making them social they're coming out and they're having fun with their friends there's nothing negative about any of this right um, the downside is you're going to make almost nothing you are you look at the secondary market and you have these people who get angry if you charge over and angry if you charge under even though they're hypocritical about it and um, you have to abide by the secondary market for something, singles being a big thing there. You can't charge $15 for a soul ring. It doesn't work. I can tell you that right now. Uh, now, you might be able to charge more for a sealed booster box or attempt to charge MSRP, but you still probably won't sell very much and people will leave one star reviews. It's going to look bad for your store. So you're stuck in a corner there, but you also have to pay judges. And we pay our judges $20 an hour. You have to pay your employees. We pay our employees $15 an hour. Uh, you have to let people pay for free on casual commander nights. And if you don't have that, then I don't know if anyone's going to come to your store. And that's a very serious thing. If your store is empty, no one's going to pay entry to join in events that barely have people in them. So um, it's just a very difficult business. If you're starting a restaurant cafe, it's different. You need volume. Same thing. You don't want people sitting down. You want people to do takeout. That's where you make most of your money. So a lot of things to take into consideration. And here we are. I'll make another video once we're like basically about to open official opening POS and everything set up, part timers in, everything. And we'll make another video and we'll have people in playing and that'll be fun. But here's a little look just right before the storm. Uh, we've gotten we've gotten pretty far. There we go. I think we did it. I mean, the game the game store is here. Signs about to be put in, put uh, put up, and we did it. That's cool. That's a little check mark. Open a game store in South Korea. Something most people can't say, right? So congrats to us. You guys were part of this journey. And let's just see how it goes, man. If it's successful, that'd be great. But if it's not, and we just got a couple of groups of loyal, fun people, I would love that. Love that. We're still going to be doing pack crack, uh, pack, pack crackings. We're going to open product on camera. Um, time difference is going to suck, but we'll open product on camera. We'll do live streams. It's going to be super, super fun. And that's what I'm excited for. And that's happening soon. 
So I'll see you guys next time. Alan from MysteryMTG.com. If you have any questions, you want to open a game store, you come into Asia, whatever, just ask me those questions, man. Alan from MysteryMTG.com. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.